Today I have something special for you. We're going to build an impressive task database with some amazing formulas that you wish you had discovered sooner. Trust me, it's going to be worth your time. When you look at a list of dates, it doesn't really talk to you. What you want is relative dates, the actual day of the week and how many days or weeks you want to postpone the task if you decide to do so. And if it's done, you just want everything reset. While the purpose is simple, you will find that writing that in Notion formula isn't so simple until now. So grab a cup of coffee and let's start building. Let's create the task database. I'm going to call it task DB. You can call it whatever you want. You are going to need a done checkbox property, the default task name, a due date, which is a date property, a formula property called due status that will outline the relative dates, a day of the week, which is a formula property, which will be a dot that will indicate the day of the week so that you don't schedule a task for the weekend by mistake. A postpone by, which will have a list of days you want to postpone this by and a new due date that defines what the new postponed date will be based off the number of days you postponed by. And finally, the new day of the week so that you're in full control. If you want to add subtasks, you go into Customize Task Database and you can toggle on the sub items. From a views perspective, we will have a table view, a calendar view, and you will calendar by the new due date that's outlined. And I'll explain later why we chose the formula as the due date. We will add the due status to show up as comments in the date, which is helpful to know whether the task has been previously postponed or not. And we will have a week view, which will display the current week's calendar. And of course, we will have the due status show up here as well. I've created a set of test tasks labeled test one through six. Let's build the due status formula. The formula is structured as follows. First, it checks if the task is completed. Next, it determines if the task was due yesterday, today, or tomorrow. Then it checks if the task is past due, that's before yesterday, and calculates the number of days overdue. Finally, it determines if the task is due sometime in the future. For color coding, red indicates any past due items, including yesterday's tasks. Yellow highlights today's and tomorrow's items. White shows future tasks up to a month away, and green indicates anything due further in the future. Feel free to adjust the formula to use any color combination that you prefer. To make the code easier to understand and edit, I always include comments. The formulas we'll be using the if and the ifs statement, which has the syntax if condition true or false, the date between two dates and the unit, the today formula to show today's date without the time, comparison operators like equal to, greater greater than and less than, arithmetic operators, something like plus and minus, a format number to convert the number into a text string, flow to round down to the nearest whole number, style to indicate the color of the text, and comments, of course, with the slash asterisks in the beginning and the end, Boolean values, true or false. Now, to follow along more easily, you might want to have the syntax of these formulas handy. Let's start with the done formula. Now, we use an ifs statement. If the done property is checked as true, we mark the property as completed and color it purple. Now, otherwise, the remaining part of the formula starts to apply. Now, using the ifs statement means we don't have to repeat the if condition each time, simplifies the formula quite a bit and reduces the total number of brackets that you require at the end. The next part of the formula handles immediate due dates. It calculates the difference between today and the due date. And if that's yesterday, it shows that in red. If it's today or tomorrow, it shows it in yellow. For overdue tasks before yesterday, it shows the number of days due in red. And if it's due beyond tomorrow, it shows as due in the next seven days. Because we're nesting the ifs in a specific sequence, earlier conditions take precedence. For tasks due in the next 14 days, it shows it as one week. For those within the next 30 days, it calculates it in weeks. And within the next 365 days, it calculates it in months. The formula distinguishes between singular and plural, something like one month and two months. These future dates are color coded in green. And for those tasks beyond a year, it similarly shows one year or multiple years in singular or plural as appropriate. So I've 
created a series of postponement options, something between 1 and 6 days, 1 and 4 weeks, 1 and 11 months, 1 year, and of course, the completed option. Now, the formula that accompanies this is a nested if statement. It checks the select property and adds the appropriate number of days, weeks, or months to the due date using the date add formula. You can also mark the task as complete, which I've included as an option. Now, based on your selection, the date is automatically recalculated. If there's no postponement, the original due date remains. This is why we use the new due date for both the calendar and the week views. The day of the week is essential to keep track of weekends. We need to create three variables in the formula. The first one is week for a week string, x for calculating the day of the due date property, and y which indicates the spacing of the dot from the beginning of the string. For the week string representing Monday to Saturday, define it by the first letter of each day and style it as code to maintain correct formatting. You'll find that there's a slash n at the end which takes you to the next line. The day of the due date returns a number from 0 to 6, representing Sunday to Saturday, and this number is stored as the variable x. x can be reused to define the number of spaces from Monday the dot should appear. Each character occupies one space, and the space between is calculated as another space. Using this, we define y as a derivative of x, in this case, 2 times x minus 1. The pad start command takes a text string, a dot in this case, the position of the character, and the leading spaces before the dot, which is a space. To complete the string, add the spaces at the end, defined by the trailing spaces. The total string length used is about 13. So depending on the length of y, calculate the trailing characters as the difference between 13 and y. And by joining these three pieces, you get the full string. The formula uses the due date in the first instance and the new due date in the second instance. Now we're almost done, there's just one more step. When you tick a task as complete, you want the postpone by field to automatically show as completed. To achieve this, you create an automation. The trigger is the checkbox being marked as done, and the action is to set the postpone by field to completed. The new due date remains the same as the original due date because you've incorporated this into the formula. Consequently, both the week and the calendar views reflect this change. To learn more about Notion tricks, you should watch this video. And if automation is your jam, you should watch this video.